Hello everyone, I'm Nick and in the last video we talked all about how to set up the API and how to set up Swagger. In this video we're going to talk about a more important topic and this is versioning. You have seen while I was setting up Swagger that there are many like V1s, V1 here, this can go, but you know you use an API and you see a V1 everywhere. So have you ever wondered why you actually have this V1 there? You probably have and you probably know that this is versioning. But why is it so important? Well, here's the thing. When you have an API and you expose it to the public or to any consumers, everything that you expose is a contract. You cannot break this because if you break it, so you change and you didn't let them know, then their code will break too and their service will break. So whatever is exposed to the public under a version does not ever 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 have uh, breaking changes you just don't do that because it's a very bad practice and people will not trust your API so in this case we have an API user uh, endpoint this is not good what you would normally have is an API v1 users endpoint which you give you which would give you all the users of the system and we're going to talk about uh, this more today. So this was uh, the old controller we made. We don't need this anymore. So I'll go ahead and delete it. And as I said, we're, we're going to make an, um, a social network called Tweetbook. So what I need at this point is a posts or a post controller. And actually, let me make let, let me name it posts, and I'll tell you why. Uh, I don't want you to get confused with a verb post. So this will be a controller all about posts. And again, this will extend the controller uh, class. And we're gonna go ahead and make a public I action result, which will return all posts for now. And what this will be, again, we are not in the competency zone yet we'll just explain what we're doing so whatever you see now does not mean this will be the way it is forever for now all i'm gonna make is a list of some type we'll, we'll call it post so this, this these are gonna be the posts and uh, we're gonna initialize them in the constructor so post will be a new list of posts which will have some items in it so let's go ahead and create a folder called domain and that's where our domain objects will be and we're going to talk about what the domain object is later but for now just know that it's a it's an object that is used in the application but it's not exposed to the consumers it only goes downwards not upwards for now and let's give this post an id So this, this post will be um, a new list and um, we're going to add five of them, five random posts in the list. So add new post and ID equals GUID dot new GUID dot to string. So every time this is initialized, we're going to get new posts in there. And uh, we're going to get back an OK request with all the posts in JSON. Now, this is a method which will be converted to an endpoint. But what is the name that this endpoint should have? Well, we're in the posts controller and we're returning all posts. In REST, this means that this is a get endpoint, which does not change anything in our database or anywhere. It just asks for a collection of things, so a collection of resources. This would mean that the endpoint should look like API, first slash v1, first slash posts. This is an appropriate RESTful endpoint. You could have alternatives where the API is not actually a folder looking uh, directory, but it's actually a subdomain. So you'd have something like API dot blah, 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 dot com for slash V1. This is also another scenario and very real scenario. We won't go down that route for simplicity's sake. 
So what I'm going to do for now is I'm going to run this application. And as you can see here, I have my V1 endpoint. I have our API. We can change that later, as you can see. And then we have the endpoint. The endpoint has no parameters. And all that it shows at this point is that a response is JSON and returns 200. So as you can see, we return five posts. This endpoint is versioned. The way this data is returned is a contract. If I wanted to change even the case of the ID, and I had like a capital ID instead, this is a breaking change because I don't know how my consumers consume this. So if I were to do any breaking changes that are not backwards compatible, I would have to make a new controller which is all about the new way of doing things. That's why you see APIs have a V1, uh, API, V2, API. This is with every product basically that has an API. For that reason, and just to make things clearer, we're going to create a folder called V1 inside our controllers. And we're going to move our post controller in there. If in the future we need to have another controller that is versioned differently, so a V2, we might have to rename this controller and then add another folder definitely with a V2 name and different routing. Now, I mentioned routing and you, you probably know or don't know, but .NET Core supports the route attribute where you can have a template and a name for this um, routing. But they also support the same thing in the HTTP GET um, attribute. So I'm going to use this again for simplicity's sake. It's just very clean, very nice. What I will do is I will make a contract folder and I will make a class in there. And this class will be named API Boots. So this class will be a static class. Does it need to be instantiated ever? And what it will do is we will actually use it to have everything nice and clean in a single place. On top of that, I will make another class. Again, static class called posts. And then inside of this, I have a property actually does not need to be a property it can be a public constant string which is get all and will equal to the following now this is fine but you can see that when we're going to add more things like create or get one which eventually will have a, a post ID. This gets repetitive, these are all the same. The problem is not that this part is the same because this is fine for differentiation purposes, but this can go away. So what I can say is I can make a public const string version equals to v1 and a public const base so a string base equals to api now let me just rephrase this to root and make base be a combination of the two. So it would be something like root for slash version for slash. And this will be called base. Obviously this cannot be constant, so it will be a read-only string. Why do you not like this? Non-static, static. static. 
read only. Yeah. And then all we have to do is string interpolate here and do this. It's actually recommended to not have the false class there and just put it here. And again, we're going to have to change these now because they're no longer constants. I'll delete the other ones until we actually get to them. So this contract, which is the API routes, are also versioned. As you can see, we have the version here, meaning we're going to make another V1 folder in here. We're going to paste them. So now what we do is we have our controllers version and our roots version. And this is nice because now we have them completely separated. So we can simply do this. This must be a constant expression. Just let's keep all of them constant. And this will make our controller happy. So here we go. If we run this again. Sure enough, nothing changed. We have our API versioned and we can run this and we get the same result back. What well, with different values. So thanks for watching this video all about versioning our API. Subscribe and leave a like if you like this video and I'll see you in the next video in the series. Keep coding.